holy cow, look at all these metrics I have in my app. I have average pace, average moving pace, best pace, average speed, average moving speed, max speed, total time, moving time, elapsed time, and then I have average heart rate, max heart rate, aerobic, anaerobic, average cadence, max cadence, average strike length, total ascent, and estimated sweat loss. Who needs estimated sweat loss? Hi, I'm Ralph from Welcome to the Aegis Runner. If you use a smartwatch or a smartphone and an app to track your runs, you've probably spent a little bit of time on it and looked at it. It has a lot of different metrics that you have available to you to look at your run, look at your fitness, and so forth. I thought I would take uh, and share with you a few of my favorite metrics that I track, that I look at while I run and after I run, and kind of condense that down, why I think they're important, why you might think they're important too. I certainly would not discourage you from looking at all the other metrics you can find in there, but I think if you focus on these few, you'll do a lot to judge your fitness, your health, and how your runs are going. So let's get started. So as you look at the metrics within your phone, within your app, they basically are in two broad categories. One category is what I call more fitness or health. This, for example, might be VO2 max or heart rate. The others are more mechanics, how your run is going, pace, cadence, for example. And some of those you can monitor while you're running, and some you have to look at after you run. So I want to start with what I think is the most important metric. If you follow no other metrics, follow VO2 max. And that is simply the volume of oxygen that you can consume in one minute of intense exercise per kilogram of body weight. It's a great measure of cardiovascular fitness. It's so good that the American Medical Association kind of suggested to its members a couple of years ago that maybe they want to start uh, looking at that in their patients. An obese person with a high VO2 max could actually live longer statistically than a normal weight person with a lower VO2 max. So it's a great predictor of cardiovascular health. Now, to get VO2 max, you're going to need a wearable. You're going to need a smartwatch. You need something that monitors heart rate and GPS. And these companies like Garmin or you know Samsung or whatever have algorithms to calculate VO2 max. But you're going to need a wearable. You just can't use your phone. Uh, but it's really an important metric. And if you don't monitor it or you don't track it, I suggest you do. It's just a great thing. Now, you want to judge the, your VO2 max by looking at a table that gives you uh, acceptable values based on your age because the older you are, the lower your VO2 max is going to be. So a 65-year-old person is going to have a lower VO2 max than, say, a 45-year-old person, even though they could be uh, fairly equal runners. So VO2 max is not something you monitor during your run. It's calculated after your run. Now, the second metric you ought to be tracking is your heart rate. And again, you'll need a wearable. You need a smartwatch or they make heart rate uh, monitors to strap around your chest. And you want to look at that for a couple of reasons. One is, if you want to do an easy run, now you could decide based on how well you can talk and hold a conversation, but you also look at your heart rate. Now, my Garmin, I have a Garmin 4Runner 245, which I'm not wearing at the moment. I got my Galaxy watch on. But it will actually show me my heart rate and it color codes while I'm in an aerobic zone or a threshold or a max heart rate. So if you want to do an easy run, you want to keep your heart rate kind of below in, uh, about 80% of your max heart rate. If anything below that, and you'll either be in, a, in zone three or zone two or zone one. And that way you know you're doing an easy run. If you get above that 80%, you're going to be into a threshold run. Or maybe if you're above 90%, it's a max run. So if you're trying to do an easy run or you're trying to control a threshold run, monitoring your heart rate during a run can be very helpful in controlling that uh, your pace and your effort to keep you in that zone that you want to be in. Again, if you're not familiar with heart rate zones, I've got a link and down below to, to instruct you a little bit about heart rate zones. Now, so heart rate is heart rate is something you can look at while you're running, but you can also look at a post run. Now, my Garmin, my Garmin and my Connect app, I can actually go in and see how much time I spent in each heart rate zone, and will also give me a graph to show how my heart rate varied over my run. And so you can compare about, hey, when I started off getting getting started, my heart rate was up kind of high because I wasn't in a rhythm yet, and then maybe get down to a, into a rhythm, and your run gets kind of easy, you're controlling a little better, and see how that changes over time. So start measuring your heart rate and use it to help you control and maximize your, your run training. So VO2 max and heart rate are the key variables as far as health and fitness that I track. So if we move into the category of mechanics of a run, how is our run going? The first one I kind of monitor is cadence. And again, my watch, my Garmin watch will give me cadence as I'm running. I can look at it. I can also look at at the end of the run, see how did it vary over time. So my Garmin actually gives me a graph. It's a little complicated. It took me a while to study it and understand it. But the color of the dots relate to my cadence at that point in time. And you see a lot of red on there because I do run, walk, run. 
every time I do a walk, my cadence drops down. Therefore, that's a red dot. I think, I think that red dot is like below 150 steps per minute. The blue dot is kind of where you want to be. The blue dot is around 180 plus or minus, I forget the number, plus or minus a certain amount. So the blue dot is what you want. The green dot you'll see in there is a little lower. It's like the next interval lower. So I think it's like an average of maybe uh, 168, 169, something like that. And I haven't quite figured out why I have more blue dots in the center of my run than not beginning at the end. It may have to do with the frequency of my walk breaks. I don't know how Garmin uh, calculates cadence. By that, I mean, does it look at a 10 second interval? Does it look at a 30 second interval or a one minute interval? How does it do that? And depending on when you start and stop a run, the average cadence for that uh, increment might be different. Uh, so I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I think those blue dots and green dots have because of how it's averaging as I go from one from a run to a walk. Now the next variable of course is pace. Now if you've looked at any of my videos you'll hear me say don't worry about pace and that is still true. Do not worry about pace. But I do think you want to monitor pace. You want to look at pace for a couple of reasons. One is you want to make sure that your pace is not working too hard, too fast, or too slow. For example, if I'm out doing a long run, I'll be looking at my watch and give me my average pace and, and, and I'll realize, oh my goodness, my average pace is too fast. If I want to finish this run, I need to slow down a little bit or I'm going to risk not getting the miles I want to get in. So it can help you judge how hard you're working. Now, that thing pace can do could be, again, it's kind of a, a, a left-handed measure of fitness. If, you're, if your average pace for your runs is improving over time, maybe you're getting a little fitter. So start tracking pace, but let it guide you, not drive you. Don't, don't work yourself too hard trying to meet a certain pace, but certainly let it guide you. Let it guide you how your run is going and how you may want to uh, integrate it into your training plan. And of course, there's miles. Miles is something we always track. How far do we run? How far did we want to run? Of course, it's something you can measure real time. Of course, on my watch, it'll tell me how many miles I've run. And of course, at the end, it'll tell you the total elapsed miles. And that's something, again, that you can track. If you're on a training plan, you're out doing a six mile run a day, did I get six miles? So I think tracking miles, I'm sure everybody does that. I'm sure you're doing that because you want to know how far you ran. Now, depending upon your, your wearable, your watch, you may get some other metrics that could be very useful, and two of those are contact time and vertical oscillation. Now, my Garmin Forerunner 245 will not do that. I have to add a running pod from Garmin if I want to do that. But interestingly, my Galaxy Watch does. It, it actually will provide those metrics, some advanced metrics. Now, what contact time is how long your feet are in contact with the ground. And vertical os oscillation is how it ends. It's how much you're bouncing up and down your run. And, and and you want, kind of want low values of that. You want your feet to spend a little less time on the ground. That's more efficient. And you don't want to bounce up and down when you run. So those are also two good metrics. I don't look at those too often because my Garmin doesn't do it. But if I wear my Galaxy, I'll go in and look at that. I'm showing you an example of how Galaxy uh, shows those advanced metrics. And they just kind of classify it as something you need to improve or it's good or, or it's excellent. So contact time and oscillation are something you might want to consider. So those are the main metrics I track. VO2 max, heart rate cadence and pace and of course miles. So those are my recommended ones and as you heard at the beginning of the, of the uh, video there are just a ton of other metrics in there. So take, I would not discourage you from looking at those. Please do that. There may be some ones of interest you'd like estimated sweat loss. I don't know why anybody would want that. Uh, it's kind of a variable that's hard to track over time because depending on the temperature and how much you run and environmental condition that can change. But it's there if you want to look at it or at least it's there if I want to look at it. So use these core metrics VO2 max heart rate, cadence, and pace to help guide your run, and miles too, don't forget miles. Use those to guide your running uh, adventures, your running life, uh, monitor yourself, and continue to improve or maintain. So thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please scroll down and hit that like icon. And while you're at it, if you're new, I'd love to have you stick around and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again and happy running.